good morning in the last class we discussed about uh, anthropometry workstation design how anthropometry is uh, anthropometry collection of anthropometric data or the field of anthropometry how it is helpful to design the workplace or workstation okay what is the use of anthropometric data how to analyze it that we have already discussed today we'll discuss uh, working environment okay and anthropometry what is good housekeeping necessity of good housekeeping advantages then good housekeeping procedures okay and then uh, hygiene and drinking water nutrition and then we will take up the workplace and its design or work design workplace design considerations so to uh, we'll start with and i want to share with some videos also later in the last part of the class of So later we'll uh, take it up. So before that, we just discuss about the definition and concept of housekeeping. Uh, the term housekeeping here we can write it as. so the definition you can write it as uh, it has been borrowed actually the housekeeping uh, is uh, borrowed from the maintenance of domestic properties in the home or house that's why then the word came housekeeping and is now liberally applied to the maintenance of both cleanliness 
and order in all kinds of business establishment so keeping the house in a clean manner or position so that is, that itself is extended to the industry and we, uh, for keeping the industry clean tidy neat okay presentable uh, so that uh, it, so that uh, the environment will be so uh, clean and everybody will be uh, able to find the components or the tools in, in their places right and then uh, find it everything uh, neat and they feel like doing more work or they feel like doing uh, uh, feel like uh, putting more effort so that they can work more efficiently and effectively this is what it is that is the aim of keeping the thing uh, keeping the room or the house or the uh, the industry uh, clean so that itself is uh, housekeeping in uh, and uh, cleanliness is the condition wherein building work rest areas machinery equipment and tools are kept free from dirt dust stain etc good housekeeping is the first requirement to make healthy workers so maintaining the cleanliness of course the hygiene will be adding it later but the cleanliness keeping everything at right place so that everybody can find it at right time will make uh, the uh, people healthy or you can say that it will create an healthy atmosphere and happy atmosphere and they feel like working this is what it is the necessity of good housekeeping the necessity in that we have learned definition necessity necessity then uh, of housekeeping is make and maintain a clean and neat orderly factory work work area and its surroundings work area as well as its surroundings should be maintained clean right uh, neat and order and everything will be kept in order order in the sense in a tidy way so that, that's what i told right material of right quantity uh, should be available to the right person right which we can call it as a clean uh, and a neat and tidy environment then make work area look pleasant so that every worker who is working at the workplace should feel pleasant so that he can uh, his efficiency will increase or he can maintain his efficiency throughout the day more satisfying motivated motivate for a worker to work so if areas are pleasant clean neat tidy then everybody will feel good those who are working there and they motivate it will motivate the workers to work hard then minimize fatigue and discomfort to the workers so right quantity of material at right place at right time available to the right person make the things easier and uh, more comfortable to the workers minimize injury and accident of course it will minimize if the everything is um, Uh, uh if it is not maintained properly uh, if the environment is not maintained clean or the paths are not defined properly if uh, if the things are kept on the path or something like that then there may there may be a chance of accident or health hazards or injury avoid that or to minimize that we need to keep the uh, factory or the workplace or the shop floor uh, clean tidy right increase the life of a plant building and facilities uh, and the facilities so it increase the life of the plant if you keep them clean maintain cleanliness in the sense you will have to maintain it for example uh, uh, you paint a yearly every year you go on, uh, you paint the walls or you paint the machine or you paint the for example the desk so that you are maintaining them properly and they they look very neat clean nice pleasant so that the students in the in our organization students will feel like sitting on the uh, uh, desk which are properly designed that is also equally important and properly maintained cleanly uh, kept can, uh, uh, clean okay properly painted they look nice 
so all these factors make the students to sit on the desk and write on the keep their books everything on the book uh, on the desk and write it and uh, perceive whatever the teacher is explaining so all these things happen if we keep if we maintain the environment properly maintaining the environment means the keeping the environment clean tidy neat this is what it is then avoid life and other hazards of course because we are keeping all the components all the materials all the machines at their places and we are checking it at the end of the day or even in between we are reviewing whether all the things are at right place or not so definitely that will lead to uh, lead to avoid the hazards then permit effective uh, natural illumination and ventilation so we need to have a proper ventilation and illumination also so we need to have the proper uh, on the the sizes of the windows for the room and curtains okay and uh, the lighting system need to be uh, properly maintained and properly uh, fitted right then advantages of house keeping advantages of housekeeping fewer accidents what are the advantages such as for fewer accidents increased life of a building machinery tools because they are properly maintained improved employee morale morale of the employee can be improved because of the pleasant environment then increased production better uh, better control uh, better product quality of course if the person better production better better product quality so why it happens because of the pleasant environment because of the proper environment right the worker feel like doing more work put more effort he want to do uh, work hard okay so the full potential he can use and uh, efficiently he can do the work because of that definitely the production rate will increase as well as the product quality will also increase then continuous cleaning reduces housekeeping costs also okay if you dump all the things at one place and then after many days or something if you want to remove it then we want to uh, hire a labor for that this that and all that definitely that will increase the cost if you go on uh, cleaning uh, the shop floor or the machine or the place or work work environment uh, frequently or daily daily basis then definitely the cost will also get reduced then material handling and transportation pick up speed definitely because we have we have uh, defined the path and nothing is there in on the path because all the things or all the uh, facilities you can say all the facilities including the machine tool room everything tools right all are at their places so the paths are totally open and clean right and free to move so de definitely uh, the material handling will be easier and it will uh, uh, the speed will be higher and uh, then uh, little or no time is lost in searching for tools and equipments or whatever so searching for the all right tools at right place available at right time to the right person so this is how you need to uh, keep the house or the shop floor clean that also we are including in that so if this is our this is made okay this arrangement is made definitely searching for the tool this that and all will be reduced so the unnecessary non productive time can be reduced so in turn the efficiency of the uh, the worker will increase in turn the uh, productivity of the organization will improve then inspection maintenance and production control function become easier so definitely inspection so inspection benches will be there so they are kept clean and whatever components need to be inspected are kept in a proper sequence all tools which are required tools or uh, instruments or whatever are required to measure or to uh, confirm the quality of the assure the quality of the product are kept in their places available to the person who is inspecting it everything is made in a proper sequence or proper 
uh, way. So definitely inspection, maintenance and production control functions become easier. Then much floor space as, uh, available otherwise occupied by unused material tools and everything. So always we say whenever the productivity improvements come, making the space available. In the available space itself, make some space free by arranging the other facilities in uh, other uh, arranging the other facilities so that you can make some part of the uh, shop floor or the part of the place free it means that you are adding productivity or you are increasing the productivity you are adding value to the uh, the the process this is what it is so making the space so this is very very important so that that floor space can be utilized for some other purpose right so this is how it is so uh, uh, good housekeeping has got its own importance uh, in organization or in houses or whatever may be the type of the organization however the big organization is this is very very important then good housekeeping procedure so what it is plan and project the housekeeping program carefully and completely so whenever we need to of course in the beginning itself we need to start it but we need to plan it properly so plan and project the housekeeping program carefully and completely then associate the associate the employees in this venture so in most of this what happens the person who is using the machinery throughout the day will clean that machine at the end of the day that is part of his work in most of the cases or in most of the industries or one or two persons will be there they are going to clean it every day after the uh, uh, working hours or whatever so this is how they we need to prepare or we need to plan then divide the plant and offices into different cleaning zones and assign the person to each zone the person is responsible for good housekeeping and orderliness of his zone and then uh, this is this is what it is so if you are going to hire some people for maintain, maintaining or uh, maintaining or uh, how for housekeeping good housekeeping then uh, make the zones different zones offices will be maintained by some people and uh, the industry the shop floor area will be maintained by some other people then storage will be maintained by some other people like this the housekeeping will be divided into so many number of people in a proper way so that they can perform their duties and the maintenance will be easier or keeping housekeeping will be easier then keep an eye on the uh, performed housekeeping schedule and conduct periodic uh, housekeeping inspections of course somebody has to inspect it whether it is cleaned or not whether it is maintained whether we are whether the uh, people those who are who are uh, given the task who are given the task of maintain, maintaining or cleaning, cleaning are doing their work or not this is what it is then uh, the the checklist need to be prepared for that machinery and equipment so general cleanliness containers uh, waste of material waste materials machine guards on operating oil air water steam leakage need to be checked this is how it is machinery and equipment are to be maintained and clean in this way we need to address all these issues what are those general cleanliness of the machine containers of the waste materials whether the containers of the waste materials are kept beside the machinery or not so that we can go on putting the wastage in the containers machine guard on when operating then oil air water steam leakage is there so how how they are need to be cleaned when then portable equipment do they hamper pers personnel or material movement so if you are taking the uh, the machinery or the small portable machines from one place to another place which part you are following it is not hampering the other material handling this that and all that you need to check then materials and storage so piling and stacking how to pile and how to stack the material or the components or the semi finished product or maybe the final product how to stack them where to stack uh, whether the shelves are made whether the storages are there whether the work in progress uh, compartments are there that you need to check then material protruding out of racks bins benches machine machines etc need to be addressed 
so they need not uh, the the shelves or the benches should be such that they should accommodate the product or the semi finished product or whatever you are going to keep on that they should not protrude out of that uh, shelf or benches then building windows should be cleaned and unbroken painting should be done uh, in a periodical uh, in a uh, periodically right and uh, door jam should be cleaned and uh, fire extinguishers and sprinkler should be clear right and floors so floors should not be slippery wet or oily so this is very very important somebody bit there or given the task of cleaning the floor in the shop floor so that we can avoid the unnecessary accidents right so somebody may put the put their foot on that and slip and fall because of that there may be a injury that need to be addressed then badly worn and rattled that should not be there garbage dirt debris should not be there loose material should not be kept anywhere whenever wherever we want so it every loose material whatever we are using in the shop floor should have its own place right then uh, stairways aisles uh, clear and unblocked and uh, well lighted then employee facilities drinking tap clean then toilets and locker rooms clean soap and towels must be made available to all the employees then spittoons should be provided another other lamps and lamps reflectors should be cleaned provision of receptacles receptacles for waste and refuse workplace should be cleaned against insects and mosquitoes of course so that they can maintain the health of the people those who are working there they should not fall ill because of all this uh, mosquito bites insect bites and all then protective equipment and clothing clean and in good condition and then electric ventilation unobstructed etc then drinking water and hygiene okay so drinking water adequate supply of clean cooled drinking water from the reliable and regularly tested source that is very very important regularly tested source should be made freely available at the convenient location right at the convenient location close to the workplace this is particularly important in the areas where the quality of the water and pipe supply is suspect so nutrition is also important work study technique how work study and ergonomics are uh, go are uh, two sides of the coin you can say work study techniques were used to measure output and found the load carried and then um, food well balanced with adequate protein calories everything should be made available at the subsidized uh, 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 price in the canteen so that is the role of the management okay so this is about uh, the housekeeping nutrition uh, drinking water and hygiene so about the workplace safety color and all those things we will take up later before that we'll go to one uh, video so now you can see here ergonomic awareness for employees and uh, for uh, in general so how the housekeeping need to be uh, done in the organization how it should be made uh, that is ms msd musculoskeletal disorder so how the worker can work easily uh, freely okay without any health hazard without any injuries okay
so how the environment should be built in so that the worker will feel uh, happy and uh, this should be pleasant right and how the anthropometry study what we have discussed is useful for for designing the work station okay you're seeing how how age and cultural difference uh, factors in to input metrics and why it's important to study this so we have two kinds of dimensions which i have explained yesterday that and One including today the static dimensions Uh, tall, with their weight equally distributed, and their fingers are straight. And that's our classic uh, anthropometric data that we take. But we also take dynamic dimensions, where the body is working in a specific task. It's important that the interior designer consider body sizes of those using the space. Here we're going to look at several different classifications. The first being the average. Um, of the U.S. population, the anthropometric data that we see here. On the low side is the fifth percentile. Ergonomic risk factors. It is important to note administrative controls do not eliminate job hazards like engineering controls do. Administrative controls involve things such as whether you work on a construction site, in a manufacturing or warehouse location, or in an office. Musculoskeletal disorders, or MSDs, make up a large number of workplace injury claims. The physical, emotional, and financial cost associated with MSDs is much greater than the cost would be to prevent such injuries. Musculoskeletal disorders usually refer to an injury or damage of skeletal muscle, tendons, bones, ligaments, joints, nerves, blood vessels, or related soft tissue, including strain, sprain, and inflammation. The most common cause of MSDs is by strenuous physical overload or by repetitive use of a joint or a particular muscle group, commonly referred to as repetitive stress disorders.
purpose of this video is to provide you with information about the various types of MSDs from which you might suffer and to help explain ergonomics and how ergonomics may help minimize your risks and injuries. The benefits of an ergonomics safety program include a decrease in risk of injury, increased efficiency and productivity, improved morale, and fewer lost work days. The contents of this video include Definition of ergonomics Symptoms of musculoskeletal disorders Health effects Identifying problems Ways to control or reduce hazards Risk factors and controls And training The word ergonomics comes from the Greek word ergon, meaning work, and nomics, meaning natural. However, the word ergonomics does not imply natural work principles. Ergonomics is the process of designing work areas to be user-friendly, using tools and equipment to reduce strain and or repetitive motions, and teaching employees proper work methods, correct posture, and safe lifting techniques. Different jobs and tasks can produce a wide range of MSD symptoms, from sore muscles to numb fingers. Symptoms may appear suddenly from a single incident, such as twisting while trying to lift a box or gradually over a period of time. Failing to recognize early warning signs could allow small problems to develop into serious injuries. Although symptoms may not necessarily lead to a musculoskeletal injury, if experienced, employees should report them to their supervisor immediately. An evaluation of the work area and employee working positions can then be assessed and necessary changes made. Be proactive when it comes to your safety and the safety of those around you. Some possible symptoms include pain or aches in the hands, wrist, arms, neck, shoulders, back, legs, or feet, numbness, cramping, fatigue, strain, burning sensation, weakness, swelling, stiffness, redness, or tingling in the affected area, reduced grip strength in one or both hands, reduced range of motion, tension and or stress headaches, dry, itchy or sore eyes, double or blurred vision. MSDs can affect the ability to perform normal work duties, physical tasks around the home, and many recreational activities. Symptoms can progress into conditions which require time off of work, prolonged physical therapy, and in many cases, surgery. Some health conditions you should be aware of include muscle strains to the neck, back, shoulders, and legs, carpal tunnel syndrome, which is caused by pressure placed on the median nerve in the wrist in the area where the nerve enters the hand. The area is known as the carpal tunnel, hence the name carpal tunnel syndrome. This nerve provides feeling and movement to many parts of the hand, and any pressure on the nerve results in pain, numbness, tingling, and other discomforts. Tendinitis is inflammation, irritation, and swelling of a tendon, which is the fibrous structure that joins muscle to bone. Bursitis is inflammation of the fluid-filled sac, known as bursa, that lies between the tendon and skin, or between the tendon and bone. Bursitis is commonly caused by chronic overuse, trauma, or infection, and causes joint pain and tenderness, stiffness and achiness, swelling or redness over the joint. To determine if conditions in the workplace which contribute to employees developing MSDs might be present, certain steps should be utilized and noted. A complete review and analysis of injury and illness records should be made to determine whether there is a pattern of ergonomic-related injuries in certain jobs or work tasks. The review may include 
looking over OSHA 300 logs and supporting 301 forms, employee workers' compensation claims, employee reports of problems with work conditions, employee absenteeism records, especially different departments, to indicate if there is a recognizable pattern. As part of the review, a hazard assessment should be conducted for all work areas, job tasks performed, and equipment and tools used to identify potential ergonomic problems. Management should determine if job tasks present ergonomic risks that may contribute to MSDs. Employee input about possible ergonomic issues related to certain jobs should be obtained. Management should talk with employees, conduct symptom surveys, and use employee questionnaires. Other possible indicators of conditions which might lead to MSDs include a decline in job performance, quality control problems, employees shaking arms and hands, or rolling shoulders due to discomfort, employees voluntarily modifying workstations and equipment to increase comfort, and employees bringing in and using ergonomic products to the worksite, such as a wrist brace. Knowing the symptoms, risk factors, and being able to identify the problems is only part of the solution. Creating a safer and more ergonomically correct work area is the final piece of the puzzle. The three-level hierarchy of controls is generally accepted as the best strategy for controlling workplace hazards, including ergonomic hazards. Engineering controls are generally considered the first and best approach to preventing and controlling workplace hazards, including MSDs. Engineering controls involve designing the job, including the workstation layout, selection and use of tools and work methods to take account of the capabilities and limitations of the workforce. Administrative controls are workplace practices and policies designed to reduce or prevent exposures to ergonomic risk factors. It is important to note administrative controls do not eliminate job hazards like engineering controls do. Administrative controls involve things such as schedule changes to provide more rest breaks and or job rotation, more employee training to recognize risk factors, and teaching correct work techniques to reduce strain and stress when performing each job tasks. These controls can be a direct result of the workplace evaluation. Personal protective equipment is considered the last line of defense. Items such as vibration attenuation gloves, knee pads, and various braces provide certain protection for employees from ergonomic risk factors. Provided the use of such items does not create additional hazards, they are acceptable for your company to utilize. Always follow your company's rules and regulations concerning the use of personal protective equipment and other items. Different MSDs can occur depending on the type of work and workplace. Whether certain work activities put an employee at risk of injury often depends on how long, the duration, how often, the frequency, and how intense, the magnitude, the employee's exposure to the risk factors in the activity. Jobs or working conditions presenting multiple risk factors will have a higher probability of causing a musculoskeletal problem. So tomorrow we'll continue with this uh, video and I'll explain that. So the, how the work stations or work area have been ergonomically designed to make the people, those who are working there, comfortable, pleasant, so that they can, their efficiency can be maintained, okay? So, this stop now. So, on how long, 